Hi, I'm Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends here in Chicago at the Morningstar Conference. And I'm here with Doug Jonas, who's head of domestic equity index and ETF product management at Vanguard. Doug, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tom. Well, Doug, Vanguard, one of the leaders in the ETF space, uh, there's a lot going on at your firm. And what we want to talk about today specifically is index construction, because as many people know, indexes are really the pillar of the ETF business. And you folks have some changes afoot. We do, we do. And we're very, very excited about them. We have uh, four of our very large flagship products are going through some changes. We're adding small cap exposure, which is exciting for us. Uh, where we've predominantly always uh, offered, they've offered large and mid-cap exposure, now we're going to add the small cap component as well, so go even more diversified, uh, really offering better, broader coverage for our clients. So explain a little bit about that. So take, take an index, uh, for example, your emerging market index, mm -hmm. and you work with FTSE right now as far as the underlying index provider, is that right? That's right, and in the emerging market space, we're not only adding small cap, we're actually adding some China A share pure exposure as well. So for investors in the emerging space, you'll have not only about 1,400 new securities coming into the index, so again, broader diversification, but also we're going to have direct exposure to China A share securities. So as you mentioned, China A shares and small cap, especially in emerging market, is that a result of more companies coming to market, better technology, better communication. Obviously, in, in with the A share space, it's more access. Correct. That's right. It, you know, we're continuing to see China open up access to their equity markets. We're continuing to see new programs come out that are very flexible and allow asset managers like us to be able to have pure exposure and own onshore companies through China A. So. In, in some cases, some people can make in the argument where we're just spread out way too much because now we've got too much of everything, but there's a lot of thought that goes into what underlying constituents make up those indexes. So explain that a little bit. Yeah, that's right. I, you know, None of these changes are taken lightly. We're always looking at how do we continue to construct our products in a way that's best for investors. So if we can offer uh, better coverage, whether it be pure access to securities onshore, such as in the case of China A, if we can broaden out the indexes, offer greater exposure, or greater diversification, that's what we're looking to do. Yeah. Okay, so let's switch gears for a second. There's a lot of talk about smart beta. Every time you turn around, there's a new smart beta indexed offering and a new uh, intelligent index-based ETF out there. Uh, that's something that you folks really haven't dove head first into, and, and, and there's got to be a reason for that. Yeah, in fact, we don't even like the term. We like to say alternative weighted indexes. Okay. And, you know, really, Tom, if you look at the industry, as much as we are inundated with product proliferation, and we see and hear about all the marketing attempts. If we look at cash flows, it tells a different story. And over one in three years, still 80% or more of cash flows continue to go into those traditional broad-based market cap weighted strategies. So the adoption really isn't been there. It's really been just mostly a marketing story at this point. Okay, uh, but I mean, there is some flow, but basically what you're saying, and you know, we're all always looking at the data that the top 100 ETFs attribute 1.1 trillion dollars of the lion's share of the ETF space. You see that continuing as time goes on? Yeah, we do think the, the traditional products will still continue to capture, capture the lion's share of assets. It really comes down to that portfolio construction, right? Advisors are looking for the best way to build out their model portfolio and to meet their goals. And, you know, broad-based, pure ETF products can do that for advisors, and they can do it in a way that's transparent. The advisor knows exactly what they own and how it'll impact their portfolio. Okay. Hey, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks.